Okay, hello. So this video is a video of a, uh, a concept I designed quite a while ago. Um, it's been several years. I made an original prototype that <coughs> it worked. It showed the main, you know, it, in the original prototype of my device, the arms actually lifted. So it showed that, uh, <coughs> that uh, the device actually creates lift in one direction. Um, this device is called the right cap motor. Uh, cap stands for centrifugal asymmetry propulsion. So it's a device that uses a asymmetry of centrifugal force, forces designed in such a way that it creates a lift in one direction. Um, the application of this would obviously be Hoover cars, Hoover vehicles, Hoover bikes, uh, Hoover droids, um, even possibly space uh, fairing craft that uh, depending on how efficient this device ends up being or this this drive or motor drive this gravity drive I don't even know what you want to call it depending on how uh, fuel efficient it is it might even open up a whole new era of uh, space exploration or getting out there at least uh, getting things into orbit so I'm going to show you the device and I'm going to show you how it works just so the concept is out there. Today is the 1st of September 2011. So everybody knows, okay, September 2011, today is the 1st. And here we go, here's the device. And this is how it actually will work. Um, we have one main motor with the drive here and then we have a transmission here that the what I'm saying is the actual working device would be a motor here with the drive shaft that comes up and a transmission that divides it into you know d runs it down this drive line here and here <coughs> we would have a um, a gear ratio that would convert well it would be such that as this is coming around, okay, you see how these arms are at an angle. They don't come across straight like this. They're actually at an angle, and this is for a specific reason. <clears throat> so the gear ratio would be such that as this arm is coming around like this, this area, the, this uh, side of this, this wheel, would go straight down on, on the y-axis so it pretty much you can see I have it lined up with the main shaft right there it would pretty much just go straight down until it's time for it to make its full revolution over again <coughs> um, now ideally with with this model um, you would have each side weighted with I don't know 10 15 pounds or whatever might not even need that much each side would be weighted. Um, the ideal model, this would be a wheel with a weighted um, exterior parameter. So how this works, as you can see from a, from a you know, bird eye view, this outer black circle shows the, uh, um, the path that, the, that these outer weights would take whereas the inner circle shows inner path. Now, this is going to illustrate that as this moves from here to here, it covers much more distance than this moves from there to there. It's the same uh, amount of degrees, but it moves, uh, you know, it covers much more distance across the top, which means, as we all know, <coughs> uh, force equals mass times velocity. So the velocity of this end over here would be much greater than the velocity of this in here. Now that continues until it reaches about you know until it reaches about here then the velocity begins to decrease of that of, of this point of this weighted area. So massive velocity all the way to here velocity decreases uh, and then velocity nullifies velocity increases, velocity maximizes, velocity decreases, velocity, velocity nullifies, <laughs> or not velocity, 
Okay, that whole time I, I was meaning force. I guess velocity too, in a way. <clears throat> All right, so what we end up with is a minimized force, downward force, and a maximized upward force. Now you would actually have the direction of the the forces would be something like that. So you would have like, if you get what I'm saying. So um, I kind of graphed this out and did the limited math that I know how to do. And it turns out that this, this would actually create almost, I can't remember what it was, like 50 times the amount of force in an upward direction than the amount of force created in a downward or outward direction, which would actually give this um, device lift in, in one direction, in a, you know, a, an accumulated direction of up, or whatever direction you know, you're know you pointing the device, you could have it going left or right, whatever. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the right asymmetry, uh, centrifugal asymmetry propulsion motor. Um, it would actually look like this. In practice, you can see how you know the movement of that has already kind of caused it to weird out. It has a hard time doing that. That's why you would have to have the motor driving it with a drive shaft and a transmission and. It would have to be a completely geared, geared machine. <clears throat> um, if you can, if you're a visual person, you can actually visualize how how the forces of this thing would be. Um, you know, if you can imagine this spinning at a couple hundred rotations per minute. You know, with say 10 pound weights, 10 pound weights on the end of each one of these, you would have to have it constructed of a really robust material you'd probably have to get into you know some nanotechnology and some uh, just really really strong materials or alloys or something like that but uh, <clears throat> there you have it you can imagine the forces in different directions this thing would create I mean you would have you would have all sorts of uh, different forces going in different directions, but the accumulated effect would be that it would have lift in one direction. Um, it would probably be smart to have an enclosure, so if it uh, broke, you wouldn't have something flying through your head at a couple hundred thousand miles per hour. Um, yeah, so there you have it. Uh, it took me a while conceptualizing this. The original idea came from uh, my friend was telling me about a scientist that had <clears throat> used the asymmetry of, of uh, I don't know, I guess wave mechanics using microwaves bouncing it around in a sphere would actually create uh, a drive in one direction. And I started thinking about asymmetry, and you know, I, I had gone through several different models. I had gone through a model of a wheel that had a weight that spun back around as it went through so the amount you know the centrifugal force would be maximized on one side and that just seemed really impractical because the center of gravity would actually change if you move the the area of the weight which would change the whole dynamic of the device so I try to think of a really fluid way of um, of causing centrifugal force to have an uh, an accumulated asymmetry and I came up with this, and so this device, you know, the, this is kind of a, not to spec device. Um, in practice, this arm would be at a 45 degree angle, and this is a little bit more of a, you know, a little bit sharper of an angle there. And actually, I don't know, you know, I, I haven't really done the math on it. I plan to get to know math a little better, so I can really figure this out. If anybody out there would be willing to do some calculations for me and try and figure out what the maxim, you know, the maximized uh, configuration would be. That would be great. Also, if anybody out there actually has access to a machine shop, um, I would love to get an actual working model of this going. Something that could show, you know, the power usage. Uh, how much lift we can actually get out of it if this ends up being 
a fuel efficient device. I mean, you, we could have people owning their own spacecraft, hopefully. Um, if it isn't that fuel efficient, you could still get, you know, bikes, uh, Hoover bikes, Hoover boards, Hoover, Hoover everything, everything science fiction has shown us that would be fun and badass to ride around in. <laughs> um, also, I don't believe in patents. I don't believe in anything our, our world <clears throat> offers right now. This is a device for anybody to use. Uh, the reason I'm putting this video up on YouTube is so that everybody knows that I came up with the idea, just so uh, nobody can steal it, really. I mean, so nobody can really go off and patent this. Um, this is, as of right now, I'm just letting the world know, this is a commons license. Anybody can use this any way they want to use it. The only limitations I put on this <clears throat> is for military purposes. I absolutely do not condone uh, this machine being used in any kind of military application. Um, I don't believe in the military. I don't believe in offense. Offense. I don't believe in killing people. I think it's uh, horrible. And if this is to, I I absolutely do not condone the use of this machine in any kind of device or vehicle used in military or weapons applications whatsoever. So. There you have it, use it to your advantage, design it. Uh, hopefully after I'm done with school, I can put a little bit of more money and, and research into this and get some working models going. Uh, if anybody else is, is interested in getting something going, uh, let me know. I would love to have you know, some, some people in on this. Um, I just registered calltechnologies.com, call spelled K-A-U-L, technologies.com. It's going to be a website for uh, devices like this. Um, you know, the, the devices that the mainstream say, the mainstream sciences say are, are not possible. I know this is more of a plausible device because it actually uses mainstream science and scientific concepts. but you know, on calltechnologies.com, it'll actually be using all the technologies and research that all those metaphysics uh, university studies have done on, on uh, psi phenomena, actually put that stuff to use in a practical application. So hopefully that'll take off soon. Or, you know, get some ideas out there, keyboards and, and computer interface devices that, that you know, people with uh, disabilities can use just by thinking things instead of having, you know, nothing with a cap on the head with wires. You know, they can place their hand on a, on a ball and <clears throat> actually through thought and, and moving their uh, body awareness around can interact with the computer. So that's that idea. Um, calltechnologies.com. This is it. Uh, this idea again. It's the right cap motor, the right centrifugal pro asymmetry propulsion motor. Hopefully uh, somebody out there starts putting this to good use and some other people out there with more means actually gets uh, this device up and running in a working model. Um, just so everybody knows, because of the way this works, you know, it rotates in one direction, having one of these working would cause an imbalance. Uh, most likely, likely you would end up with the machine that came up and then crashed back down again. So you would have to have two of these moving in the opposite directions, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. Um, and uh, even at that, if you were putting it into a vehicle, you would probably want four of them clockwise, counterclockwise, let's see, and then this one this way, and this one this way. So that's it. I just wanted to get that out there. Anybody can use it. It's for anybody's uh, fun build your own projects. Hopefully as I develop this, I'll have more entertaining things to show. Um, I really would like to get a working model going. So as soon as I do, as soon as I have enough money to actually go get a working model with a five million horsepower motor, I mean, think of the motor, you would have to have to drive that. You've got weight distributions everywhere and all sorts of forces moving everywhere. You would definitely need a motor with some serious horsepower and torque to really get that thing working.
So that's another thing, how to build a motor that uh, is light enough, but powerful enough, just not uh, weigh it down. There you go. Have a good day. Boop.